Hey everybody, I'm Mr. Hartzler and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, principles of engineering and doing some calculations related to pressure and volume and area, uh, the kinds of things that we're doing related to um, fluid power. So the first one I want to talk about is from the practice problems I've given to my students. So we have 100 pounds per square inch gauge pressure and we want 5 pounds of pressure. Um, that's going to be optimal to be placing, I believe it's a sticker, onto a product. So I drew my cylinder and I have five pounds of pressure going over to my product. I've labeled over here, right? This is the part where I'm gonna be filling up to move this cylinder and, or to move the actuator. And it's going to be 100 pounds per square inch or PSI per square inch. And the formula for that is pressure equals force divided by area. Now we have to start plugging some things into this. So my next uh, little spot here, I have substituting and solving, and I have five pounds of pressure. I don't know what my area is, and I have 100 pounds for pressure. Um, yeah, sorry, five pounds force, 100 pounds of pressure per square inch. I need to solve for A. So I multiply by A on both sides. So A times 100, I'm gonna leave my units off for a second. Now I divide by 100. So A equals 0 0.05, and my unit is square inches, as it should be because it's area. And my final answer, just to make everything nice and neat, I write it over here. Awesome. Now, they didn't ask me for area, but I did have to find that first. They really want to know what the diameter of my cylinder is. So, and they're talking about this inside cylinder in here. All right, so my area equals 0 0.05. We found that out from the last part. And pi is our constant here, and we're gonna solve for our radius. Start off by dividing by pi. And that gets me 0 0.0159 inches squared. Now I have to solve for r, so I need to square root both sides. And once I square root both sides, I get 0 0.126 inches equals my radius. Again, that's not quite what they're asking for. They want to know diameter. So I'm now going to multiply that by 2 to find my diameter. 0. Uh, what was that? Two, five, two inches. And two times my radius equals diameter. And I'm just gonna move my final answer over to here. 0 0.252 inches. All right, I believe that's most of our first page done from the practice problems I gave everybody. Off to the next one. This one starts off at number seven. I have a pneumatic cylinder which reads 200 pounds per square inch, or PSI, when the volume is 30 cubic inches. The cylinder is compressed until the gauge reads 60 PSI. And I drew my little picture again. And my gauge is gonna be in here in the middle. Before I'm reading these values, so I have volume one and pressure one, that's before it's compressed. Then I have volume two and pressure, oh, forgot to write my two. So that's after it's been compressed. And as we're going through this, one of the things that's important to note is I have absolute pressure, which is a little bit different from my gauge pressure. So atmospheric pressure, or sorry, absolute pressure, takes in the fact that the atmosphere is also pushing down on us. And that's at 14.7 PSI. So I have to find absolute pressures for all of these things. That's a, a problem that a lot of people forget to do on tests. So don't forget about that, folks. Absolute pressure, so I have to take my gauge and add 14.7 to it. So my gauge pressure initially, or before I'm compressed, was 20. I'm going to add that to the 14.7. So I have 34.7 PSI is my before pressure, my absolute before pressure. My after pressure was 60 pounds per square inch. So 60 plus 14.7 gets me 74.7 PSI. And so I have my before and I have my 
after. So this is P1, this is P2, absolutely. Now I have to find the volume of my cylinder. So this is where I'm gonna have P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2, because these two things are always going to be equal to each other. My pressure times my volume, it's going to equal my pressure times my volume as long as I'm picking both of the things that are initial and then both of the things that are after. So setting this up, I have 30 inches cubed times 20 pounds per inch squared equals my volume two, I was never given that information, times 60 pounds per square inch. Do a little bit of simple multiplication and then dividing by 60 and I end up getting 10 inches cubed is my volume. So there's that part, awesome. Not too bad yet, right? That is my volume after. Okay, doing okay, number seven. Oh, and actually number eight as well, done there. Now I just wanna to talk to you about a couple of formulas that we're going to be using throughout this packet. I don't necessarily want to go through and show you every example because most of them really aren't that bad. So again, absolute pressure, or sorry, absolute temperature now is Fahrenheit plus 460 degrees, and that's just to get us into Kelvin. Uh, if you've had a physics class before, you've known that sometimes having negative temperatures can kind of screw some things up. And uh, so we always get that into a positive number. Kelvin at zero is absolute zero. So that's why we're considering this our absolute temperature. Kelvin is never negative. And um, so we have to add 460 to convert Fahrenheit into that. And 16, for number 16, you'll need pressure one divided by temperature one equals pressure two divided by temperature two, where pressure one is just pressure before and temperature two is temperature after. So keep in mind ones are before, twos are after, and P means pressure, capital T is temperature, usually lowercase t is time. So capital T is typically reserved for temperature. The next formula is kind of weird and if you don't have your formula sheet, you might not have found it. So I wanted to make sure I gave it to you. Flow velocity is going to be about Q equals V times A. This is for number 20 in particular, but Q is always going to be your flow rate. V is your flow velocity, hopefully that makes sense. And A is area, just like it always is. And mechanical advantage is still force out over force in, just to give you a quick refresher of that. And that is all of my notes for you. That is everything you need to know. Sorry about the potentially poor video quality. I'm doing all of these at home because we're on a shelter in place order. So this is 2020 and this is March 24th. So COVID-19 is going on and this stuff be trippy. So hopefully everybody's doing well and hopefully this video is helpful. If you have any questions, please send me an email. Uh, if you're one of my students, you can always uh, email me or message me on Instagram and Twitter. And um, of course, if you have questions too, you can leave them down in the comments if you can't find my email anywhere. And I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. If you have any suggestions for videos, please let me know those down in the comments as well. And make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Bye, everybody.